Hello, hello. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Today, we are doing a really nice product roadmap stream. This stream is all about what we are doing in 2023 for our products, our initiatives for the community in helping you build better in Webflow. And that's what that's, this stream is all about. We're not going to, um, we're not going to learn anything. We're not going to do anything other than this. It's just telling you what we have planned here. And this is not everything that we're going to do. I promise you there will be more things completed in 2023 than this list. But this list is what's confirmed. This is, I would say, over and tell you. So I'll be going through this presentation. And with the presentation, it will have a little quarter number, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And it will give you an idea of when this will be completed at the time that we're going to a lot of people here. We have a lot of really nice comments. People getting really excited here. And we're already, are we? Are we? We were over 100. Now we're not over 100. But when we are over 100, I'll make a note of it. But let's get right into this. We're here for the product roadmap and let's go through this product roadmap. So we have a little presentation here for you and I'm going to share the screen. I'm going to show you this presentation and we're just going to walk through what's going on here. Okay, let's get started. And yeah, stream is a bit choppy. Yeah, okay. And let me let me call that out. So right now you can see I'm not in my normal environment. My office right now is being redesigned. It's being rebuilt. Um, it was always kind of temporary. And now I'm in the room over and the Wi-Fi is not in here. So yeah, a little bit choppy, but hopefully good enough to get you this information. Let's do it. Okay. First on the list, we're going to talk about the open source initiative. This is what we are really going to focus on in 2023 when it comes to in, in terms of um, all of the, the open source things that we're going to give you. Uh, FinSuite will create and grow open source code bases to engage with the development community and help you build web projects. And all open source projects will be released under the MIT license. It took us a while to get to this decision, but we went with MIT because this is what allows you to do pretty much anything with our open source code bases. And we're going to go through these code bases, but just know that MIT is the most free one that you can really do anything. You can go create your own products from this. You can go and, um, you can go resell certain parts of it. You can remake it and remix it for your own. We'll post some guidelines on that, but go check out that MIT license. It's really, really free. And we are now officially over the 100 person count. Let's cue that sound effect. That's effing sweet. Nice. Love over that 100. That feels great. Thank you so much for coming. So open source, MIT license. You can do anything with it. And this is what this open source initiative will look like for 2023. On top, we have attributes. This is going to be the big focus. This is what people are really going to use to, to grow inside of our developer community. And then under that, we're going to have our reverse proxy docs. We're going to have our TypeScript utils. We're going to have our developer starter and hacks. Now, all of these are going to be GitHub repos. They will be open. They will be free. Let's start with attributes here. Attributes, it's going to be open source, MIT license, and it's really the goal is for people to build on top of what we have created for attributes. That means building additional solutions on top of filters. That means building your own solutions, maybe custom components using the attribute system. And if you use attributes, you know it's easy to implement. We want that same feeling for the developers that work with it. So you define your elements and then you go and apply settings and options to those elements. Easy for us to implement in Webflow and then 
easy for developers to build. So if you're a product developer, if you know some code, if you know developers, having something like attributes under the MIT license really gives you a lot of power. Next, the reverse proxy docs. We are going open source with this. This is something that we have been using for years. The FinSuite.com domain has over 50 Webflow projects hosted under it. And this is really one of our keys to working with more enterprise companies, bring more big businesses into Webflow. This is what we're looking to do. And by releasing this documentation, we believe that we can help other people bring in more people to Webflow. Uh, this, this documentation is going to be free for you to use. It's going to be step-by-step -step guides. Uh, it's going to, to really show you how you can do this for your own company and also for the companies that come and build Webflow projects. Uh, they hire you to build Webflow projects. And we've already started educating on this. If you're a FinSuite Plus member, you've already, you may have seen Alex's session on this with in Q1, we will officially release this documentation page and you will be able to do this. Uh, this is, yeah, this is so important for people that are looking to take that next step in their Webflow journey that I, I, I know this for a fact. There are so many companies that probably come to Webflow and they're given the wrong information about what you can do with Webflow. Somebody may come and say, I want to do this with my domain names. I want to do this with my folder structures. And if you just know native Webflow, uh, that the conversation stops there. And maybe that person doesn't come into Webflow. But if you give them the right information, if you have the right tools to set them up how they want to be set up, I believe more people will be coming to Webflow with this information. So later this quarter, we will be releasing this under our open source initiative. Number two, the FinSuite Developer Starter. This has been released. This is not brand new, but we are continuing to improve it and improve it. For example, last week we just launched Live Reload. That means you can be typing in your code editor and in real time see those updates happen in your testing environment. So really, really cool. We're going to continue building on this and it's going to be part of this initiative. Next, FinSuite TypeScript Utils. Nice. This is documentation for FinSuite's TypeScript Utility Toolkit. And this was really made specifically for Webflow. This is something that our developers use all the time on our client projects. And it, it just helps you do more with code um, without writing all the code. It, it's, a bun it's a series of methods, JavaScript methods, TypeScript, TypeScript base that will help you just implement more in Webflow. So let's take a look at these, what we have right now on this method list. Look at everything we have on this Webflow list. We can go and get some really important information here, um, like collection elements, breakpoints, publish date, site ID, restart Webflow. These are all based in Webflow and we have full documentation on this. And this, let me, let me continue going through these components. Copy JSON button, display controller. We got some type guards in here, types. Look at this really beautiful list of all these things that we have created for you in this utilities repo. So this also is going to be under this open source initiative. One of our goals here is to bring more developers to the platform. We recognize that with more technical developers in Webflow, we are going to find bigger companies in Webflow, and then there is going to be growth throughout the entire industry. So this is why we are not only releasing this open source, but we're focused on really growing this and building it into a, uh, a really useful project. And then the last thing as part of this open source initiative is the Hacks project. And Hacks have been around with FinSuite for a long time. It was actually our first ever project for the community. And that was written in jQuery. Now we've redone hacks in TypeScript. We are officially going to have that in a repo and have that available for you uh, right inside GitHub. And a lot of people may not want to use GitHub. We're 
a lot of us are designer based. So we're going to have unified documentation that puts all of this together, attributes, TypeScript utils, the hacks, developer starter, reverse proxy, it's all going to be under one unified documentation. It'll be custom, it'll look nice, and it will pull right from GitHub. So our developers can manage it in GitHub. We can open issues in GitHub through this documentation. And then you as the end user can view a really beautiful layout of all of this. Excellent. Okay, that's it for the the open source initiative, really, really uh, an important initiative for us. Not just, it's not focused on money. It's not focused on anything other than just getting people involved, getting developers to this platform, getting people more technical. As you become more technical, you take on bigger projects, you do better work in Webflow, and it just strengthens the entire community. So there we go. Next. Let's talk about attributes, not on the open source initiative side, but just updates that we're going to make for attributes. When we do open source, there'll be a bunch of third party solutions, but we're always going to grow our internal FinSuite solutions. So for example, our CMS filter, we are going to go and make a V2 of this. This is one of our most popular solutions here, the CMS filter and People ask for features all the time, and we have made a big list of that over the past year, and we are now going to build the next version of this. And this will be a FinSuite solution of the open source project. And V2 is going to feature powerful enterprise level search features, and it's going to be released around the same time as this open source release of attributes, probably around quarter two. Uh, it will take a lot of time to go and build that open source documentation for developers to use, as well, of course, as this attributes V2. So let's look at exactly what this advanced search features means. V2 is going to allow you to set up advanced search rules, really specific granular rules about how the search works. We can use logic operators, fuzzy search, and configure more search input settings. We're also going to allow you to do display per filter results um, and conditionally display filter options based on the user selection. So these last two, the display filter results and, and um, conditionally display the filter options, that means when I go and start filtering the grid that the, the filter options will change. It will say, hey, there, if you click this, there's not going to be any more results. It'll gray out. Or if you click this, there'll be 35 additional results added, or there'll be less results added or whatever. It'll be completely configurable. And this overall will allow you to further customize the Webflow search experience. And with these kind of features, again, it's just getting you closer to these bigger, bigger projects. Uh, I, I, want, I want companies to come to you looking for filter work and then you blow them away with what you have available in Webflow, all of these features. So we can do what you're asking for, client, but we can also do this, 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 and this, and I'm going to include it for free because with attributes, it just takes another few minutes to implement. So that's what V2 is looking like. And this is all based on what users have been asking us, right? We, we've been collecting this feedback and this is what people want. So we're gonna go build it for you. Next, favoriting. We built, we built an internal favoriting tool last year and we just never finished it. Uh, and, and now we're going to finish it. Q2 this year, you will be able to do favoriting inside attributes. And this is favorite or compare type functionality. This favoriting will be powered through the user's local storage. It does not use Webflow CMS. It's 100% custom attributes based, no auth required. So together with this filter V2, with the favoriting, we're just helping you really take more control of your data here. Really nice. Next, attributes now integrates, integrates with Wiz projects. This one just shipped last week, or maybe it's about to ship right now, but it's we're, we're done with it. It's, it's ready to go. 
and this is really, really exciting. This means that you're able to use attributes on a project that is using WISD. So previously, if you were using WIS and attributes, attributes and WIS wouldn't really communicate. WIS would go and append items to the page. Attributes would try to filter those items, but there was a mismatch of which items are on the page, what do we need to filter, what's available right now. Now they are connected. So I can go and append 20,000 items from Airtable or Xano to our Webflow, my Webflow site, and then I can go and filter that with attributes. And the only thing I have to do is add the CMS element solution, and that will automatically connect the two. The CMS element solution is what allows you to not use Webflow collection lists with filter. So really easy integration. It's super automatic. And we're already seeing internally people using Wiz with big filter, uh, big filter lists. And this goes for all attribute solution. This isn't just a filter thing. So load, sort, um, slider, like whatever you want to use, right? Any of our solutions are now going to integrate between the two platforms. Wonderful. Next, ASV2. The V1 ass is good. It's not great. It's good. We're going to make it great and we're going to do it later this year. We are going to completely con reconceptualize a, a new way to do this. Uh, right now, our the, the support tool, um, we're seeing a lot of people use it really well and we're seeing a lot of people a little bit confused about how it works and not exactly giving you the information you need. So our goal is to, to make this a lot easier. Um, and we're thinking it's going to be almost like a personal assistant, as if you're chatting with somebody and they're going to walk you through the, the solution. Not sure yet, but we are thinking about it and it's definitely going to come later this year. Also, it's our goal to allow attributes open source developers to integrate with this tool. So imagine I'm an open source, uh, I'm, I'm a developer. Um, developing attributes open source, and I want to build a maps feature. Um, it's going to be an attributes-based maps component. I can use the ass to run a checking tool, a, a check system for my maps implementation. So this will be part of the whole package for developers to come um, and hopefully be able to walk people through their solutions. Next, FinSuite extension. Let's talk a little bit about FinSuite extension. Folders, this is our top priority. We need to do this quickly and we're going to do it in Q1. Folders released, it's really powerful, but there's a couple of UX issues and we, we are going to fix them. First, features. You'll be able to change the entire an entire folder of utility classes to custom classes. For example, taking everything with form dash and changing it to form underscore, essentially taking it from that utility class folder and putting it in the custom class folder. One click, you'll be able to do that. Next, you'll be able to duplicate and rename an entire folder. So right now, um, you, you can do this, but it gets a little weird when you try to do it at different levels and you try to um, you try to do bulk renaming, maybe for certain items. We're going to make it really easy to rename everything or some things or bulk. And then last, search and filter classes by keyword. So you'll have a search input. You'll be able to search through those classes and find what you're looking for. Now, the, the big UX improvements, horizontal space improvements. This is one of the biggest problems with folders, and we're going to fix it with this next update. Uh, Folders panel is only going to open as its own panel, not with the candies panel, the client first panel first. So we want to do something like press F to open folders and just folders, not anything else. We're going to allow horizontal scrolling in the folders panel, and we're going to reduce the width of folder columns overall so that it really feels like it's part of the UI and it doesn't feel like it's part of this really nested FinSuite extension list of, of uh, panels. And then some bug fixes. 
and we'll have a really nice update to that folders feature. Really, really nice. If you're using folders, say it in the comments here. Um, I, I use folders all the time. I have to. If I'm not using folders, the, the site doesn't feel right to me. So go share some folders, love, if you are using them. And then last on FinSuite extension, updated UI. Uh, believe it or not, Alex Iglesias designed the current version of, of the, the extension. Uh, our CTO, our developer, someone who should not be really figuring out the UI stuff, but he did, he did most of it. And he's not a designer. So now we have a designer who's touched up everything. It's going to look a lot more like a native Webflow thing. And we're going to make that update along with the folders update. So it's just going to look a little better, probably work a little better. And that's going to be a nice update to FinSuite extension. And then we will not actively develop new features in FinSuite extension. So those are going to be our big two things, folders, updated UI. And then we're going to take a step away from extension updates. I'm sure we're going to have a couple more things added to the extension. Doesn't mean it's shutting down. We're going to maintain it. Uh, we're probably add some small things as we need them, but we're not going to put a priority on this. Uh, we are going to instead prioritize the open source initiative, things like attributes, filters v2. These kind of things are much, much more requested by our user base. So FinSuite extension takes a back seat um, and we will we'll focus on those other things. Okay, next, Wiz. This is a big one. We're talking new features. We're talking um, next steps. We're talking some big changes about how you will pay for Wiz. Let's go and talk about that. Okay, Wiz, Web Apps and Webflow. Let's first talk about the dashboard redesign. So the the current dashboard, it it's okay if you have a couple projects, maybe one or two workspaces, but if you have a lot of projects or a lot of workspaces, it can get messy quickly. Uh, we, we just kind of built that dashboard as an MVP, wasn't really designed by a designer, and we just, we shipped it. Now, after we've seen people use Wiz, we've, we now see people with a lot of Wiz projects in their dashboard, we have redesigned how this looks. So you'll be able to see your recent projects right up top. You'll be able to see your workspaces and it's going to be a much better experience for anybody that has more than one project in WISD. Next, the clients feature. Together with this dashboard update, we are going to release a clients feature of WISD. And there's going to be a clients page in your dashboard. We're an agency. We know what it's like to work with clients. We know the good things. We know the bad things. We know the frustrating things. And our goal is to help you through all of that. We want your clients to have an amazing onboarding to WISD. We want your job in onboarding them to be really easy. We want you to get credit when you bring a paying member to WISD. And we want you to be able to organize and manage your WISD clients directly inside WISD. So that's pretty cool because You'll be able to see a list of everybody that you brought to Wiz, everybody you're working on, uh, projects you've transferred, and we'll be able to quickly see who, who's bringing the most value to Wiz, who's bringing the most projects to Wiz. You'll be able to assign workspaces to clients. So set up your workspace, do the whole project, and then do a really nice transfer to that client. Um, it's it's really set up for agencies, right? We we know agencies, so we're we're here to to help you do that. Okay, next here, new code editor. This one this one was requested and super super needed. This one's big. This one actually is going to improve a lot of workflows here. The new code editor is going to be integrated into the panels UI. If you're a Wiz user, you know that the the editor UI kind of pops up in a pop up it almost feels like it's disconnected from the UI. Um, and we're gonna make a change to that. We are going to now have syntax highlighting. We're going to have suggestions and autocomplete while typing. 
There is going, you can now write JavaScript inside the code editor. Uh, we, we didn't allow for that before. You could kind of write some code based stuff, but now you can actually write JavaScript inside that code editor. Uh, we'll have integrated knowledge base and docs right inside of the code editor. And we'll also have AI generated code comments so that when you start typing, an AI will try to help you explain what you just did. Or if you inherit a project, it will all be commented because it will be AI commented. And this again is right inside of the UI now. It's no longer going to be a pop-up. So really nice. If you're a Wiz user, if you do anything more than a single value in that value field, this is a nice one. Next, versioning control in Wiz. This is a Q1, Q2. This is a manual opt-in to new versions of Wiz. You have the option to upgrade to beta versions for specific projects. You have the option to remain on previous versions of Wiz, and this is useful to assure that your live applications are not influenced by new updates. This is how traditional web development works. And although we're not, we, we don't want to be traditional, um, there is some logic in why these updates may want to be opt-in, right? We're, we're making changes quickly to Wiz. So if you build an app, it's perfect. And then we make an update and we break that, not cool, right? Nobody wants to get a message from a client saying, why doesn't this work anymore? What's wrong with this? We don't want any updates to influence what you have already built. So you'll be able to lock into a version. It was built here. It works. When we make an update, this version will not be influenced. And you can really be more assured that there won't be problems when we're making these rapid updates to the product. If you want to test it, you can go and opt into that update and test it. Um, you can opt in certain projects for beta. So maybe we release a beta and you say, I'm not going to do beta on my client project, but I'll do a beta on this test project that I'm doing. And then you can revert back and go back and whatever you want. So this versioning control, this is something that we found out very quickly that little tiny things could break as we make updates and we don't want that to happen. So that is coming Q1 to Q2. And more integrations with attributes. Now this one is a little bit vague. Uh, Wiz and attributes will continue to share resources and build integrations between platforms. There's a little bit more information that we can't give you right now. Like I said in the beginning, this is most of what we're doing. Like pretty much a lot of what we're doing, but we can't say everything because we're not 100% sure if some of these cool integrations that we're thinking about will actually happen. Everything we're going over here is of high confidence that it will continue, but we just want you to know that Wiz and Attributes, we are thinking really closely in these two products working together. Okay, next big announcement, Black Market. We are going to team with Blackpeak, with number one agency, Bailey Fisher, doing an amazing job growing his agency through Wiz. Uh, some amazing projects Bailey and his team are already launching and getting new projects and just an amazing resource for us to help us continue building this product. So uh, Bailey pitched us, or we, we co-pitched each other on Black Market. And we loved it and it, it just totally makes sense. So the Black Peak team is going to create this template and component marketplace for Wiz projects. You'll be able to sell templates and custom components to other Wiz users. And it's going to serve as our official marketplace. We're not going to have our own marketplace and then Black Market is a different one. Uh, this is, we're going to, to stand behind Black Peak in, in developing this for us. So, Great job, Bailey. Great job, Black Peak. Um, and please go check out uh, everything that Black Peak offers for Wizd. Really, they're doing a great job with content, community groups, everything. Um, and Bailey can really help you figure out if Wizd is the right, uh, the right product for you in your implementation. Wonderful. Next, new pricing. Oof. We've heard a lot of this. A lot of people don't like the Stripe transaction fees in Wiz. We're getting a lot of hate around that. Uh, hate's a strong word, but some really 
unhappy comments. So we are responding by just removing that Stripe transaction fee. We want Wiz to be easy to implement. We want it to be smart to implement. We don't want your clients to decide on Wiz and then get to the pricing and say, actually, I don't want to use Wiz. That's not a good move. We don't want that. So we are going to remove those Stripe transaction fees. We're going to completely redefine how the pricing works for WIST. What we released, it kind of worked for some people, but we're, we're not really seeing it how we imagined. Um, we're seeing mega projects on our lowest, pro on our lowest tier. Um, we're, seeing, we're seeing people not use the product because of the Stripe fees, and we just don't want that. So what we're going to do is offer a more modular model. So you can pay the base price, get the core features, or you can have add-ons almost like a plugin. And Wiz plugins will allow you to give your Wiz project more features. So for example, these are things that we can see our, ourselves developing in Q2. Maybe some of these hit Q3. Stripe Basic Checkout, Stripe Connect, Stripe Checkout Fields, Data, ca data Caching. Advanced backup, server-side rendering, Chart.js integration, staging environment, enterprise search, and choose your server location. So if you don't want any of this, you can get the base package. But we're finding that a lot of clients, big companies, they want specific things, and they're willing to pay anything for these specific things. So if your client requires a server location, great. We have a special system for that. We'll set you up for it at this much extra per month. You want um, Stripe Connect. We took away the Stripe processing fees. So now you can pay a flat monthly cost for Stripe transactions, regardless of your revenue, regardless of the amount of people on your site. So this is a direct response to how people were reacting with our pricing. And we are now changing it um, because we love you. Next. And yeah, Stripe Connect. Um, I'm seeing some comments about that. We have seen some people, you know, testing out Stripe Connect. This is serious, creating a marketplace uh, for other people to go and sell things. This is going to be really, really big for, for some agencies, really powerful. Next, FormFlex. We've been talking about FormFlex a little bit, and now we are, we're ready to start acting in 2023. Here we have Q3, Q4 on FormFlex. This is a JavaScript API that we currently and actively use on client websites to build complex logic flows in Webflow forms. Maybe, look at that maybe in italics, maybe FormFlex is a Wiz plugin. This will allow users to build complex logic forms inside Wiz. Note under not confirmed, but possible. This is kind of the only slide here that um, isn't confirmed, but we wanted to add it just to show you that something like a form flex building these complex forms really can go right inside of WIST, right? We want to build a web app with WIST. And when you, when you're building a, a complex form, this may go right into a, an application, maybe working with an insurance company to figure out somebody's quote. So they can go through a bunch of questions, calculate a bunch of things, write some JavaScript in the new WIST editor and then go and give that user that end result. So FormFlex, it's coming. We don't know exactly what it looks like, but we're growing FormFlex every few months. Every, every time we have an implementation with a client, we're doing a little bit more with it. So it's growing, but it's in the background. And we'll keep talking about it until that development starts. OK. FinSuite Plus. Nice. Let's talk about FinSuite Plus. Pro is renamed to plus. So we were calling this FinSuite Pro, FN Pro. It's now called FinSuite Plus. And the big reason is Pro is just not a good word for something that you pay for. I do not want to pay for something and then be considered a pro after I have made my payment. That's not what the word pro means. Pro means some kind of experience, some level of knowledge, um, something not money related. So this is not a money, this is pro is not the right word. So we switched to plus. 
everything moving forward will be plus and we have a new dashboard for our plus members uh, we have our new feed one simple list of benefits for all FinSuite Plus members. We have our new calendar of FinSuite Plus sessions, meetings, and events. Content, video education for FinSuite Plus users only. Check out that reverse proxy for Webflow sites, part one already live. And then we have the new FinSuite forum on Discourse, which will replace our Slack. Our Slack will be shut down entirely in one or two months. We'll give you plenty of notice of that. But now FinSuite support will be run on Discourse, a proper forum setup. And the forum will be read only for non plus members. And then the forum will be full access for FinSuite plus members. So this is big for us. Uh, we, we're constantly answering the same questions in Slack. Uh, people can really self help themselves. And people in the community can be rewarded for helping people. Check out this leaders tab in, in this screenshot here. We have leaders as a way for people who are helping in the forum to be recognized. We'll have a leaderboard, we'll show when people are, are really helping us in our product support. And this will be a great way for people to interact with each other, including with groups and chat. Like I said, Slack's completely shut down. So we'll be doing some custom things in discourse to properly use their groups and their chat functionality. So this FinSuite Plus dashboard, it's really going to, it's going to be the one place that you go for anything related to FinSuite products, FinSuite support, FinSuite news, all that stuff. And our live education sessions, this is a big one. We're going to have a variety of weekly content live, beginner content, advanced content, technical content, whiz content, we're doing three sessions per week. This is going to very quickly increase to five per week. We're already booked out in sessions for the next few months. So we, we feel like we need to add some more sessions because people really want to, to go and present. Uh, we have FinSuite employees presenting. We have FinSuite Plus members presenting. It's just going to be a big education session. And we're, we're going to work up to every day for that. And you get access to that if you are a FinSuite Plus member. And the whole idea about this, it's not to come every day. We do not want you to come every single day to these sessions. That's a lot. We want you to pick the content that you're interested in. So I'm interested in design. I'm interested in UX. I'm interested in WIZ. I'm interested in code. You can choose what you want and come to what you want. And I wasn't going to answer questions right now in the, the comments, but I have to bring this up from Pascal. Uh, why haven't you built a forum in WISD? We are. It's coming. So first, we're going to build this FinSuite Plus forum. When we've built that, we are going to clone it, and then we are going to use it for WISD. So absolutely, this is coming. It needs a forum. And yes, WISD, it's going to mirror that same setup as FinSuite Plus. Cool. All right, next. FinSuite SSO. FinSuite SSO has a lot of updates and a lot of updates coming. As we have these big product advancements, um, FinSuite SSO will be at the core of that. It will be at the, the base management about that. First, let's talk about shipped updates. We've just shipped these in the past week. You may not know about them, but here's what we have just done with our FinSuite account SSO. This is accessible at my.finsuite.com. And now you can have subscription management. You can change or cancel plans, fix payment issues, and download invoices all on your own. Before we were doing this manually, now you can do this within your dashboard. You can control your login identities. So you can link multiple email addresses and Google authentications to one FinSuite account. One of our biggest support requests for FinSuite Plus is I need to change my email. I need this email, 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 change, change. We built the system for you. So you can add your work email, your personal email, your Google auth this, and any of those logins can be used to access your FinSuite account. Couponing system, 
All products inside FinSuite can now use coupon codes. Yay. Great. So now we're going to be pushing these out a lot. We'll be making a lot of coupons for you. Um, as you may have realized over the years, we are not super money SaaS focused. We do need to generate revenue for all these product initiatives over time, but this is not the primary use case for why we're doing all of this. So we want to give you a lot of coupons. If you are a leader in the forum, we want to give you coupons. If you are an active power user of Wiz, we want to give you coupons. And now FinSuite account fully supports this. And then last, user balance. You can now hold a balance or credit for paid FinSuite products. So you cancel a service, you, um, yeah, cancel a service. That's the best use case. You can now hold that balance for another purchase in the ecosystem. Future updates, notification settings, full control, account and product notifications. So you'll be able to choose which notifications you get from FinSuite. We have a lot of things we can update you on. Specific products, events, sessions. Uh, you, can, you can choose, toggle on and off what kind of emails you will receive from us. And soon you will be able to manage your API integrations across all FinSuite applications. Not right now, but soon. So I want to authenticate my Airtable account. I can do that in my integrations tab. And then when I'm in other products, I can go and access that authentication from the account. Remember, the FinSuite SSO is the base that allows you to log in and access all the products that we have right now and we will release. That's Wizd, that is um, Noble. We're going to talk about that soon. That is uh, soon to be Attributes. Very cool. Um, and FinSuite Plus. So as we add more, it's all under one base. You're not going to have multiple logins for different products. And then last, user profile. We want to make this kind of interactive with the community. So you'll be able to have a user profile and soon there'll be a way for people to connect, probably some, some way through the forum. This is a Q2 to Q4. Not exactly sure how that will work, but it will work. Okay. Just looking at some comments here. Nice comments. Noble Airtable, next. Great, this is a big one uh, for a lot of people. We have a lot of active users on our current Noble Airtable. It's still technically in beta. It never left beta. Uh, and the reason is it was, it was developed by more of a junior developer, um, a developer that didn't really know Airtable well, didn't really know Webflow well. Uh, it made it work, but there's a bunch of issues and we don't like issues. So it never left beta. It, it's, it, we wouldn't recommend it to go and use on all of your client sites. So we are rebuilding a V2 because everybody is requesting it. People love using this. And the V2 is completely rebuilt. We now have the proper development tools, the proper development systems, and we are developing this as a full real product. This will fully integrate to FinSuite account. It will have an improved UI and we will have two-way sync logs, record specific control, more Airtable field compatibility, and it will be compatible with synced tables. So this will go and release. It will have a it will have a usage based pricing, really similar to Zapier, not in terms of the actual cost or the the usage numbers, but similar to Zapier, where you you just get counted by how much you're actually using it. Uh, and I do know that FinSuite Plus users, you will all get a massive coupon for the first X amount of months of use of this, uh, but it, it's going to be usage based. Don't have the pricing on that, but the pricing will be completely, uh, oh, we don't have any pricing now, it's free. But what we're, it will be paid and it will be usage-based. That's, that's what we know right now. Okay, next, we have the Suite Framework. Suite Framework, sounds nice. So this is something that Alex, 
our CTO has been thinking about for a while. He built a little test version of it, started it again, and now we're starting to form an idea of what this can look like. And the suite framework is a FinSuite development framework, and it's going to be built specifically for Webflow, building web applications in Webflow. If you've tried to build React or Vue or really anything inside Webflow, you'll see that it's not, it's not the best experience. It can be done, we've done it, but it's not the best experience. It's not, the, these, these frameworks were not built to, to use in Webflow. They were built for traditional environments. So we're now building our framework to fit with what a Webflow work, workflow looks like. And let's look at some of the technical features. Build interactive apps declaratively, surgical updates, no virtual DOM, performance focus, TypeScript first, lightweight, no compile set step required, and of course, designed for Webflow. This, thinking it's going to be a Q3, Q4 thing. As you see, there were no, no Qs put up here. Uh, and that's because we don't know exactly when this is going to go, when this will happen, but we know it will happen. We know that it's going to be powerful. And this works all together with all of the more technical things that we're doing for you. Like WISD, you learn some technical stuff, you're going to have an urge, a desire for more. This development framework can help you even get to the next step past WISD. Um, maybe you can even use Suite inside of WISD. We don't know but it's going to be cool and it's going to be something that you've probably never seen before. Okay, so that was, that was a lot. And that's actually the end of this presentation. So now I'm going to look at the comments and I will go and answer any questions. We'll stick around just for a few more minutes answering questions here. And I'm only going to answer questions that are directly related to the presentation. If you like this stream, if you're enjoying these updates, please give us a thumbs up, share it on Twitter, share it with a friend, share a timestamp with a friend, uh, show some love in the comments, put a comment down in the video. I don't know, just do something, show some love for us. It really helps us on our community team, making sure that people really appreciate these types of updates and comments. Okay, Mark. Really hate asking for things, but not sure how to get a WISD invite code. I have two projects that would be a perfect fit. Um, you know what? Mark, reach out to Victoria. Reach out to Victoria, and that will go for anybody that has a WISD, has a desire for WISD v2. Reach out, tell us your use case maybe Victoria will help you out. I can't make promises on Victoria's behalf, but I think she may help you out. So you can go and ask about that. Um, all FinSuite Plus users have already had WISD access. Remember our FinSuite Plus users are going to get priority for everything that we're doing. That includes everything that we just talked about. So eventually everybody will have access. Eventually everybody will be at the same level, but when we launch things, when we're testing things, when we're, we're giving out discounts, FinSuite Plus members get that benefit first. That's part of the benefit list. Shane, can we get a Twitter thread of all the updates? Yes, absolutely. We're going to do the Twitter thread and we'll also add some links in there. So this was a linkless presentation, but we're going to add those links in there and the the links will help you get to some of this, this content. When I get a FinSuite Plus, can I get an invite code for WISD? No, we are no longer doing that. Uh, this was for people who signed up for FinSuite Plus before January 1st. These are that we are rewarding the people who have supported us for the longest amount of time. Okay. A uh, good question from Daniel Brasnio. Attributes, where can we request features like CMS slider integration with Nest? So when we go and we release this open source, when we are now having things on GitHub available, 
we are going to open up issues and requests so that you will be able to formally request this and it will be shown to our developers in our GitHub environment. So right now we don't really have an official place to do this, but we are working on an official place to do this. Okay. Shopify integration. Some of you may be asking about this Shopify integration that we hinted at, at the FinSuite Plus Slack channels. Don't wait on this. We had the idea of how we were going to release it. That idea has been completely thrown away. We are taking a completely different approach to the Shopify integration. And if you notice, it wasn't in this roadmap because there is not a high level of confidence in what we're going to do with it. Remember, everything in this presentation, there is a high level of confidence that it will be completed exactly as we are talking about here. So Shopify released it, uh, or we, we talked about it, people got interested, but when we went to actually go prepare it for you to use, we realized we need a completely different approach, not in the implementation, but in the way that we offer it. So there's a wait for that. Don't hold any projects for it. Um, it, it may not come soon, but it, it may come, but it's not in the, it's not in the presentation for a reason. Okay, Jeffrey, can we get a tutorial for FinSuite attributes and WISD? Yes, we're going to do this in our FinSuite Plus sessions. You should come to those FinSuite Plus sessions. We'll be educating you on all that stuff. Okay, great, great, great. Good, good, good. Okay. Nicola, do you think WISD will be public by the end of the year? Yes. Definitely. We're thinking Wiz is going to be public by Q2. Not sure, but probably around Q2, we're going to go public with it. But still, we want our closest and most dedicated users to be using this product first so we can get feedback, notes, and usage from people that love FinSuite the most. That's what's most important to us right now. Um, okay, Babis. Yeah, there was a new attributes on the roadmap at some point about slider libraries like swipe or spline. Yes, this is coming too. But again, it did not make this roadmap because there is not a high level of certainty of when it will release and how it will release. So yes, it's coming. We're still planning it, but we have, we're just not exactly sure how to do it, the, the strategy to do it, I should say. Okay. Uh, Maggie, or Ma Maggie, or, yeah, uh, which JavaScript frameworks will be supported for FinSuite framework? Well, it, it will be a framework. So there won't be any supported frameworks. It's not like React will be supported by the FinSuite framework. The FinSuite framework would be a replacement for React when building something like a custom web application in Webflow. Okay, good. Okay, Frank, shout out to Brian who's doing support for Wiz. He's killing it. Great, thank you so much. If you have a question about Wiz reach out to our support team. We have a great support team, technical support team. All the, all the support know how to write JavaScript. They are technical people. They are not front end people, uh, like HTML, CSS type people. So reach out to them. They will help you. We are looking to grow our support staff quickly. Uh, we know that we, we are encouraging people to contact support for help with their implementation. And we really want to walk you through your first few setups with WISD. And we think after fir the first few setups, you'll just be, you'll be on your own, you'll be an application pro. Okay. Uh, Fabian, can you make attributes favoriting work with native Webflow members so data can be accessed forever from different devices and browsers? Fabian, we'd love to do that. 
Um, if there is, if Webflow allows for a way to integrate with that membership, yeah, we'd love to build that. Anytime that there is a native integration that makes sense for that product, for that tool, we want to integrate it with it, if it makes sense. And yeah, a, a favoriting tool would make sense with that, but we don't know how to integrate with it, what tools are available, um, and if that's going to work with our current system. So I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Okay, good question. Uh, is FinSuite planning to make any attribute solution which will work as Barba.js, like preloading another page inside a current page using animations? So we're not planning to make any solution like Barba.js, but with attributes open source, a developer could make Barba.js work with attributes. That's a beautiful thing about attributes that we can start to integrate other JavaScript libraries that normally require code, and we can have them implemented through the attribute system. Apply an element, apply some settings, apply option, maybe adjust a, a few things for Webflow, like resetting interactions, and you would be able to ex access Barba.js and that functionality through the attribute stack. So that's really the power here of open sourcing this, that a developer can go and make that happen for you. Mike, will Wiz have breaking changes with all the new updates? No, there will be, there will not be breaking changes. Absolutely not. Momosh, imagine GSAP with attributes. Yeah, absolutely could be possible. Don't write any code for GSAP, just apply attributes. Totally possible. We want developers to go and build that under the open source system. Okay, we are getting to the end of the hour here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for your questions. I'll say it again. If you like this stream, give it a thumbs up, write a comment, share it with a friend, tweet a timestamp of your favorite moment, whatever. Any kind of support that you show for us, we really, really appreciate. We're very happy about this 2023 product roadmap. We'll be back with more updates every few months. We'll be doing these kind of streams more often where we just give you a whole bunch of information about what's coming in the next few months. Thanks everybody. Have a great rest of the week and we'll see you soon.